all the parents who are here today, Alhamdulillah, um, this is a great day for all of you uh, and all our children here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, we do that again once more because I just could not hear you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So my name is Adil, those who don't know, um, I'm one of the workers here at the masjid. Uh, I have, to be honest, I'm standing here, but I have not, I have not done, done much for the mothers of this all year uh, because it's been in very good hands, Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Today I will be reciting Surah Ma'oon. Um, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. A'udhu Allahi Yukadibu Bidin. Fadalika Allahi Yatu'ul Yatim. Wala Yahuddu. ألا تعام المسكين فويل للمسلين الذين هم سلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراؤون ويمنعون الماءون جزاك الله ما شاء الله ما شاء الله that's fantastic Ismail you done really well so uh, we're going to start inshallah uh, I just wanted to touch base on a couple of things here inshallah because it is important that we all know, you all kids know uh, why you're here today, yeah? Um, I'm just going to build up a background before we, we begin. So you're in Masjid Falah, and Masjid Falah is part of an organization called KMAB, which is Kokni Muslim Association, Birmingham. Now, the Masjid actually was one of the last pieces of the work that the, that the organization did here. And I think I've said this last time when people were here as well. The first job that people 50 years ago who joined the uh, joined in Birmingham as a community from parts of Kenya and Tanzania was to set up a madrasa, a maktab, a place for children to learn. And it's very much what the Prophet ﷺ actually got as a way the first time where he got. What was the first uh, word the Prophet ﷺ ever heard from Allah about, from uh, Angel Jibreel? What was that word that he heard uh, when the revelation of Quran started for him? Go on, Ismail. Recite. So, Iqra, right? And that was one of the following foundations of this organization as well. So Alhamdulillah, 50 years down the line, uh, we're from uh, the maktab to the, the marriages, to the funerals, to everything else. And then the masjid came as the last manifestation of us being a community here. So Alhamdulillah, you all are future here who actually uh, will go out there in the community from tomorrow onwards and actually talk about the, the work that this masjid does and the maktab that you've been to, Alhamdulillah. Okay? Um, Sharaf Abba is not here, the head of Madrasa. I mean, he's done a remarkable job with Mullah Usman and Mullah Jined, the entire team here of getting you all to a fantastic start and a fantastic year that you've actually had. So congratulations to all of you. And I'm going to ask our President Rashid Saab to kick off the meeting today. He'll say a few words and then the awards and everything else will start, inshallah. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes, okay, inshallah. Rashid Bhai, please, if you're going to come forward, please. Dear respected scholars, elders, brothers, and the wonderful children. I extend my warmest greetings to all of you with the Islamic greeting of Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Abdul Rashid Khalfe, and I'm the president of KMAB and Masjid Al Falah. On behalf of the extreme trustees, management committee, masjid committee, and all members of various subgroups, I would like to express our heart felt gratitude to incredible children of our beautiful madrasa. My dedicate, the dedicate teachers led by Maulana Osman, the head teacher, the madrasa staff, headed by Sharafat Khan, hope he's not here. For the unwavering commitment and the hard work that has led to the outstanding achievement and the success. It is a great pleasure It is a great pleasure that I welcome you all with our annual Madrasa Jalsa 
I hope you have a wonderful time. I pass over to Maulana. Uh, that's, that's the head of our uh, Madrasa Alhamdulillah, who's in, uh, that's Sharaf Adbar, who's an amazing job there. Um, I'm going to also ask Latiba to say a few words. Latiba is our trustee. He's been with the, uh, our association for the last sort of, how many years now? 30 years. Thir thir he's part of the furniture, let's put it this way, of that <laughs> furniture. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, acting trustee, head of trustees right now, also heads the funeral team. He's been with us for the last so many years. An amazing, amazing amount of work for the community. So I just want to say a few words from him, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Louder than. Um, today is a special day. It's a day that belongs to the children. It is a day that they are going to show us or they, with the results, what they have achieved. It is a day not only for pride, it's not a day only for pride for the, the teachers, but for the parents as well. One of the requirements of all the parents, including myself, is to make sure that our children learn Quran. That is our basic obligation, which you are providing very well. I also am pleased to note that most of the, uh, all the children have passed their exams and congratulations to them with the hard work and with the influence of the fantastic teachers. They have, uh, most of them achieved more than 85% of the marks, which is very good. Um, I'd like to, without taking much time, I'd like to thank all the teachers and the students and the parents who bring their children every evening, park their cars in traffic and all that, but this is the result that you actually see at the end of the day. And I'm pleased that you are all here and we can join together in this Jalsa. Thank you very much. Uh, so, now we're going to start, inshallah, the, the program for the evening. But can I just introduce uh, your head teacher, Mullah Usman? So, uh, those who don't know, we are all afraid of him, by the way, not just you kids. Anyone afraid of Mullah Usman? Yeah, I'm too, by the way. So, he's, he's the... He's the most beautiful around us. So about a few years ago when we were, and Mawlana Junaid has been uh, with us for the last sort of maybe 15 years now, alhamdulillah. So we were trying to look for people who can join the team. And we approached uh, several people around here, within Birmingham as well. But none of them were actually were, were able to do uh, as a turnaround and help Mawlana Junaid and the entire team to help the children to achieve what they have achieved today. So don't forget, you have all been assessed by an independent examiner, that, what that means is that not your teacher assessing you, but someone else is assessing you. So it's like giving a GCSE exam or an A-level exam, yeah? Or a 11 plus exam, you should all know about these things. So Alhamdulillah, we then approached Mawlana Osman and mashallah, the, the tenacity, the passion, the work, the ethics, uh, the, uh, the level of input from an Islamic perspective, all of that and also a man management and a leadership quality is all we saw in Mawlana Osman. Alhamdulillah, that's his work with the entire team here, with, uh, with, uh, with us as an MC, uh, with the trustees, and of course with Mawlana Junaid and the other teachers, Alhamdulillah. I can see Mawlana Fans in here already, <laughs> um, So Alhamdulillah, here we are after um, three years of hard slog and work uh, to see the fruits of what he has actually input. So I'm going to call Mawlana Osman over, and inshallah we'll start the event for the evening, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Mashallah, nice to see all the children in one place. No one has seen them here and there everywhere. Um, Alhamdulillah, as uh, um, Adela mentioned, uh, it doesn't matter how much we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, who gave us this environment is not enough. Even how much we thank Allah is not enough. Because this environment, safe environment, healthy environment, good environment, as the hadith of the Prophet mentioned, that whenever a gathering, people are gathered, and in that gathering there's no any other reason except for to please Allah and His Prophet, then Allah sends down malaika, angels of rahmah, of mercy, and covers that gathering, covers that group, just like us here, and covers in a, in a, in a way like umbrella. So imagine at this moment we cannot see or feel, but Allah has sent Malaika, angels of rahmah, of mercy, to cover us. And we are under Allah's mercy and rahmah because us coming here and to be here is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and especially I'd like to thank the parents um, for their hard work, efforts every day to bring the children. First of all, they start their duty since morning in, uh, in, early in the morning, taking them to school, go pick them up, bring them home, feed them, change them, bring them to madrasa, then take them home again. It is an ongoing circle, day in, day out. And then on top of that, I was mentioning to one of the parents, I said, I do salute the children. You are the one, you are the reason you motivate us, the teachers, to do this for years and years and years. If you put together here, the, the teachers, us in the madrasa, just between us, you can say probably around 60 or 70 years of service. Some has done 20, some has done 30, some has done 50, 40, and so on. This all is only possible when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that effort and ability to do it because you children give us that motivation. You start your day since morning, you come from school, you are tired, but yet I was talking to one of the parents and I said, when I see these children coming to madrasa, smiling on their face, happily, they're not forced to come here, and they spend the two hours for the sake of Allah to learn the deen of Allah, all this, you'll see it on our scale on the day of Qiyamah. Okay, now you might find it um, tiring a little bit here and there, but all this effort will not go waste. We are all, even all your teachers, in front of the, the, the trustees here, your parents, everyone, we all been the same through the same system. When we were small, we didn't, some days we didn't want to even go to madrasa. Uh, sometimes the, 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 the stars is very strict, but our parents pushed us to go and go and go. And today, alhamdulillah, we can see the, the fruit of it and the benefit of it. Inshallah, before I call the children to, um, because it is your program today, to perform here, inshallah, in front of your parents and the, the, the trustees and the management, um, Sharafat Bay was introduced, I know it's disappeared somewhere, but alhamdulillah, uh, our madrasa committee, uh, we have Ahmad Chacha there, all the children know him very well. Uh, in fact, I would say, uh, I, I, I nickname him, I call him normally the legend, because he is the one who's been from day one when the Kokni uh, Muslim Association Birmingham started Madrasa, as Adibai mentioned, it was based on education, uh, educating our future children. Since then, uh, Ahmad Chacha has been there, the trustees have been there from, from day one, since they had uh, uh, black hair until they got gray now, or silver. Uh, and it's more than 50 years. What you see today is the hard work of the elders, and some of them have already returned back to Allah, may Allah uh, grant them a place in Jannah. But this is all community work, hard work. Uh, none of them get paid. They all, everybody give their own time. They have their day job, and they still come here. In fact, tonight, uh, today they'll be here until midnight. Uh, this is all for the sake of Allah, for, for the house of Allah. And inshallah, they will see their reward in, in Akhirah, inshallah, tomorrow on the day of Qiyamah. So all this hard work has been put for, for the future of our Muslim generation. And you are part of that. Today you are sitting there, tomorrow you'll be standing in my place when I'll be long gone from this dunya. And you'll be repeating the same history again to say that many years ago, we had Mona Osman here, I was no longer with us. So it is pass on the responsibility. It started from Jibreel alayhi salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam to the Sahaba and so on. And we keep passing on generation after generation. If we don't, if there is a gap in between when the Islamic studies is not passed on to the next generation, then there is a big, big fear that a part of the ummah will go astray. That's the only reason we have to keep teaching our generation, the next generation and the next generation, because then we have to keep that, the chain that started from Jibreel, from Allah to Jibreel to Prophet and all the way to the last person. Um, again, um, the, the, the teachers, mashallah, um, we have nine of them and they're all doing my, my different job. Uh, it's not a one-man shot, it is a teamwork. Mawlana um, Junaid, alhamdulillah, uh, he's been doing this work with uh, Madrasa Fala for more than 10 years, 15 years. Uh, we have Hafiz Irfan, who's another uh, you know, part of the furniture. More than 12, 12 years he's been with the Madrasa. 
We have Mufti Tariq Saab there, uh, who with us for the last three or four years. And it, this all teamwork, you know, we all work together um, and, and that's the only way we can make it happen. Uh, and, and again, I've mentioned about the children. So inshallah, I ask the parents, please do support your children because this is amana from Allah. We put the effort now, we'll see the reward inshallah on the day of Qiyam inshallah. Now for the next program, inshallah, I want to call the children because it is their program. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Today I'll be reading the dua for the both worlds. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azaban naar. Jazakallah. And inshallah, uh, next I'm going to call uh, children from up, uh, Nisa's class. Um, we have a group of three, Sami, Zakaria, and Ismail. Come on, guys. Come on. A long time ago, there was a king who had three sons. One day he gathered his three young sons together. He gave each son a bag of sweets and the same simple instruction. You must hide and eat those sweets in a place where no one could find you. Each of the sons took his bag of sweets and left. The sons all thought, all thought and thought till they came up with a final idea of what they should do. A short while later, all three returned to their father, seeing two of his sons with empty hands. The king asked, asked each of them in turn where they had eaten their sweets. The first son replied, Oh, my father, I went to get to my room and no one was there. I took my covers and ate my sweets because no one was there, no one saw me. The second son replied, Tree the branches when no one see. Then the then the king turned to his third son, the little boy, who still had his sweets clutched in his hands. Then then his father asked him why he had returned without eating his sweets. Why haven't you eaten your sweets? Oh my father, I tried to hide uh, alone in my room with my first brother, then I tried to hide up the tree with my other brother, but I couldn't find any place where I could eat my sweets without nobody seeing me, because Allah is always watching over me. The father was very proud of the third son. The end. This tale is an effective way for us to understand the basic meaning behind a concept in Islam, which is hugely important, but which is it's very difficult for most of us to remember. The lesson is of the reward to always be aware of Allah. Mashallah. Very good. Mashallah. Well said. Um, what was the message delivered? I know the children they were a bit uh, um, hesitant in their voice and everything. But I think the moral of the story is you cannot do anything where Allah cannot see you. And that was the third child who gave that message that I've tried it to eat everywhere to hide where no one can see me, but everywhere I go, Allah could see me. MashaAllah, Jazakallah. Today I was reciting the prayer of Salah. Allah man needs them to not be zoom because they want to open the zoom, but not to fall in my feet at the minute to call me because of four or four rain. MashaAllah, well done. It's, it's, you know, um, I would like to mention that it's easy to be spectator, you know, and normally we see this, um, either you're watching the football on the TV or on the ground, and you say, how could that miss that so open goal, open net? You know, I normally say to people, try yourself to go there on the pitch and try to see. Probably when you're on the pitch, you see that, you know, the goal post is so small rather than so big. But the more far you are, it seems like, oh, it's so easy. So for these children, 
to for their age and their ability to stand in front of all of you this crowd here even to read a dua uh, mashallah it takes a lot of courage a lot of courage mashallah um, the next inshallah uh, from Mulana Junaid's class uh, let's call Adian who's gonna give read to us a uh, life of uh, Abdul Muntab أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته to all your brothers Some of us are gathered here today to receive a certificate The certificate we worked hard for and the certificate we were determined to get And as we all know the Quran is with the people who were determined to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Our Lord, our Creator Amongst them were Abdul Muttalib, who is the grandfather of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Early in Abdul Muttalib's life, he took over the duty of his uncle Al Muttalib, who served water and food, dates to those who visited the Kaaba. Now you may be wondering why just regular water, why not Zamzam water? Well, at that period of time, the well of Zamzam was lost and filled with dirt, and that was the case for hundreds of years. For this reason, Abdul Muttalib had to travel far places to get water. This was even harder for him because he only had one son. So, uh, um, and this made him really tired. So Abdul Muttalib always wished that one day the well of Zamzam would be found and used again. One day as Abdul Muttalib was sleeping, he saw a spirit in a dream who told him exactly where to dig for the well of Zamzam. The spirit... By then, Abdul Muttalib had a second son to help him. They dug. After a while of digging, the water sprang up from the ground and the well of Zamzam was once found again. After all of this, Abdul Muttalib's task was still difficult. So he made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if he was given ten sons, he would sacrifice one of them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After some time passed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his promise and he, he was given ten sons. Once all of his sons were grown up and mature enough, he told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told them about the promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they all agreed to draw lots to figure out who would be sacrificed. For those of you who do not know what lots are, for example, one lot, Abdul, it's Abdul Muttalib's lot. The second lot, it's... Um, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the third law is Musa alayhi salams. They would have to wait about twenty-four hours, and then the next day one of the lots would reappear. For example, Musa alayhi salam was chosen to be sacrificed, but sadly, Abdul Muttalib's youngest son Abdullah was chosen to be sacrificed. However, people around the area loved Abdul Muttalib's youngest son Abdullah and begged and pleaded him to offer some wealth instead. Not knowing what to offer as wealth, they went to a wise woman in Yathrib, now known as Medina, to ask her what to offer as wealth. She asked, if a person is killed, how much money would you have to pay? They all simultaneously answered 10 camels. When she heard this, she said, this time go back, but with two options, Abdullah and 10 camels. If Abdullah's law is drawn again, then you must, uh, you, mu you must add 10 more camels to the original amount, which would make Abdullah and 20 camels. And Abdul Muttalib would have to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the camels' law is drawn. This would have to carry on happening until the, um, the camels' law is drawn. So this carried on happening until on the 11th try, the camels' law was drawn. However, Abdul Muttalib was not satisfied with this result, and he said, by Allah, I will not be satisfied with this result until this happens three more times. Of course, after, after happening one more time, one time, it happened another two times. Eventually, Abdul Muttal was satisfied with this result. Although, now if someone is killed, it's worth 100 camels. In these modern days, you would probably say 100 Ferraris. Later on in Abdul Muttalib's life, he will get the opportunity to be a part of a very powerful tribe in Makkah, now known, uh, it's, it's known as the Surah um, Quraysh. There's also a Surah dedicated to it. 
In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ni ila fi kurai, bismil, awudu billahim na shaitan wa rajim, bismillah rahman rahim, ni ila fi kurai, ila fi him rihla ta shaitai was wife, falia abu du rabba had al bayt, aladi at amahum min ju wa amanahum min hof. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Because of the safety of the Quraysh, their safety in the winter and summer journeys, they should worship the Lord of this house, who has fed them and safeguarded them from fear. And later on, Ab Abdullah is going to grow up to marry Amina, and they will have the, a child no, now known as, known as the prophet, uh, last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This concludes our session on Abdul Muttalib and Al Akhirah Ta'awana wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. MashaAllah, Jazakallah, Nyan. As you can see how difficult and hard it is for a child to even read a script. Um, never mind to, to, to read by heart or to read it without looking inside. Okay, the next child I'll call is uh, from Mufti Barik Sab's class, is Hudayfa Khan, and he's going to read the Shahada for us. Audhu billahi min ashaytani rajim, bismillahi rahmani rahim, the Shahada. Today I will be reciting the Shahada. Ashadu Allah ilaha illallahu, ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. The next is from Afanisa's class, um, reading advice on taqwa. Who's doing that? Imad, Ishaq, and Zakaria. Assalamu alaikum. Taqwa is commonly translated as God consciousness or fearing God, a quality which God's the one who possesses it from Allah's displeasure and anger. For a Muslim to always be aware of Allah, like the little boy who could not find anywhere to eat seeds, sweets in secret, to be mindful of always seeking his pleasure and staying away from that which causes his displeasure in the essence of taqwa. Taqwa is a must for anyone wanting to live the Muslim life. Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allaha yuhibb al God loves those who are mindful of him. <laughs> For God is with those who are mindful of Him <laughs> and who do good. <laughs> In God's eyes, the most honored of you are the ones most mindful of Him. What is taqwa? Taqwa is not only about manners, taqwa is not about looking Islamic, taqwa is. Taqwa is not about having a beard or wearing a hijab. But taqwa is when you miss a prayer, you feel uneasy the whole day. Taqwa is when, taqwa is when you speak a lie, you feel bad, and then you tell the truth. Taqwa is a guilt that follows when you hurt someone knowingly and, or unknowingly. Taqwa is a shame and regret that follows a sin you've committed, knowing full in the sight of Allah. Taqwa is when you cannot sleep after disobeying or disrespecting your parents. Taqwa is to cry in the depths of the night, fearing none but the one above the earth. Taqwa is the guts and the will to please Allah even when the whole world is displeasing Him. Taqwa is to wear that beard or hijab for the sole reason of pleasing our Creator and to keep it on as a sunnah. Taqwa is to stay happy and smiling, knowing that this world is a test and a prison for the believers. Taqwa is the good manners and characters we practice for the sake of Allah. Taqwa is to better ourselves. Taqwa is the struggle to better ourselves according to Islam with each passing day. Taqwa is not just about rising in deen, but about fully rising again and loving it in God. Taqwa is all about what's in our hearts. And if our hearts aren't filled with proper Taqwa, then actions automatically follow and the sweetness of actions are fulfilling because we know the rewards and Allah will give us. Jazakallah. <laughs>
Mashallah, well done. Um, and the next I'll call is a voice from Mulana Judith's class, and he's going to read Tafsir of Surah to Feel, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Today I will be talking about the story of the elephant which is mentioned in the Quran Surah Feel. Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rubuka bi asabil feel. Alam yajul kaiduhum fi dadlil. Wa arsala alayhim tayibna babil. Tarameehim bi hijaratim min sijil. Wa jahalahum kasfi mahkur. With the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most kind. Have you not seen I load that to the people of the elephant? Did not make the plan go wrong. He sat upon the flocks of birds, pelting them with pellets of bay clay. He made them feel like a field of grain, eaten down to stubble. The Kaaba was a very special place from Arabs from all around the world. At the same time, there was a man named Abraha who knew very well about the fame and honor of the Kaaba, so he made a church in Sana, the capital of Yemen. Abraha decorated the church with many precious stones, just as gold, silver, and rubies. Abraha wanted people to go to his church and forget about the much loved Kaaba. One day, an Arab, not being able to accept Abraha's plan, he used the church as a toilet. And when Abraha heard about this, he was furious. So, so since he was close to the king of Abyssinia, now Ethiopia, he asked the king for help, and the king gave him an army of elephants. When Abraha reached the uh, port of the Mecca, he ordered all of his gods to take the people's camels and other animals. Among the animals that were taken, there were 200 of Abdul Muttalib's camels. Um, when, Abraha, when Abdul Muttalib approached Abraha, Abraha, Abraha was surprised by his polite character. And when, Abraha, when Abdul Muttalib asked for his camels back, Abraha replied, I've come to destroy your beloved Kaaba, and all you want is your camels back. And then Abdul Muttalib replied, I am the owner of the camels and worried about them. The owner of the house knows best how to protect his house. Um, some of the some some of the Abdul Muttalib and some of the owners, some of the elders stayed back for a lot to make the war to protect his house. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said flocks of birds with three pebbles each and the he pelted the the birds pelted the army and they were quickly destroyed. But Abd, Abraha did not die like this, but he was badly hurt, and on his way back from Mecca, he was struck with the illness and he slowly died, passed away. Inshallah. Okay, Inshallah. Um, Jazakallah khair for all the children to participate. I know it's not easy, it was hard, but Inshallah, our du'as are with you. I'm going to ask, Inshallah, the, um, the head of Madrasa Committee, Shrafa, to come forward. Uh, Ahmad Chacha, uh, I don't know where he's going. Um, and the trustees are here, Inshallah. Uh, we're gonna, inshallah, give the children um, for those who achieved. Everyone has done well, mashallah. Exception, some have done better than others. You know, most times, it's not about a, a paid job or something. It's about the commitment that you all bring in for your children. And I know, yeah, I'm gonna go for that. I'm sorry, I've been told I've missed the females, um, inshallah. So 
Uh, the, uh, I didn't know they were listening to us. I thought they had their own program. But and Zakhla to all the sisters as well. You've done an amazing job. I'm really proud of what you do. So I remember Mola Ifan one day when I was talking to him about um, the Madrasa and how, what, what brings him here. And he very clearly said, you know, he, gets, he could get a job anywhere, any Madrasa. But it's his connection to the kids, his connection to all of you, all his children, that he actually comes in day in, day out uh, with a smile on his face. By the way, Mona Ifan is very chilled out when you see him in town in his jeans and his t-shirts, by the way. If you've ever seen that, uh, it's a sight in itself, inshallah. So uh, anyway, we're going to finish now, inshallah. We're going upstairs, we're going upstairs, we're going upstairs for food. Oh, okay, just the children, you're going upstairs, and the rest of the people are staying back. Uh, on behalf of KMAB, the trustees, <coughs> the president, uh, all of us here, the team, uh, the mother's team, the masjid team, uh, are, are very, very uh, well done to all of you. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm wondering if you can do dua for us, please, inshallah. Oh. Inshallah, we'll be closing with this one. Just to know, inshallah, from today, you have two weeks holidays, but after two weeks, on Monday, the 4th of September, the month is having started again. So, inshallah. Wherever you have to go, this is the time you can go. And for the next year, from the day one till the mother's son is on, I hope you don't take any holidays. I request, this is a request to the parents, because a lot of kids, it's about the parents who book the holidays at wrong times. So this is the time when you should book the holidays, when the kids have off from school and mother's son is working. Salam. Allahumma <laughs> اللهم اغفرنا بحلالك انا حرامي واغننا بفضلك عمن سواك اللهم انا نسالك من خير ما سالك من نبيك وعبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما سعادك من نبيك وعبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وانت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتوب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين